360 live from Adesnawe. My name is Lisa Moni. And I'm Natalie Fort. Let's take a look at our headlines for the next one hour. Ashanti Regional Police Command arrests seven more suspects in the gruesome murder of Army Captain Adam Mahama. Meanwhile, family of the late captain announced June 9 as the date for his burial. And also tonight, we'll examine lessons learned two years after the June 3 disaster where 154 people died as a result of a fire outbreak and flooding in Accra. And still on the June 3 disaster, government is considering the construction of a major underground sewage system in Accra. And later in the bulletin, we tell you how over 1,000 hectares of tomato farms in Tano North of the Bonaifu region have been destroyed by a new virus. We have the details of these stories coming up shortly here on News 360. Stay with us. Watching News 360, our very first story this evening, June 3, 2015, remains a dreaded day in the minds of many Ghanaians, especially those directly affected. But two years on, many have bemoaned the continuing presence of the conditions that resulted in the flooding of Ghana's capital. Did we really learn the lessons as we claim? And has it influenced our attitude to preventing future occurrences? Well, Catherine Frimpoma has more. <laughs> We suddenly saw a building in flames spreading from one end to the other. On the night of June 3, 2015, when a loud explosion was heard at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, little did Ghanaians know that it was the beginning of a major disaster in the history of the country. We had an explosion from the filling station, which immediately spread to our house. It's been two years, and to many, it is business as usual. But to those directly affected, the sound of rings sparks fear and anxiety. Whenever it rains, I remember how I called my husband on the night when the rain started. He assured me how he was safe, only for me to be called to identify his body the following day. It affected their way of life. I always rush to get home at the sign of rain. I have also resolved not to litter the environment. For me, I now gather water sachet, which even earns me money. According to the investigation committee's report, the disaster was caused by fire and flood that struck. The Goyal filling station was careless for not covering its petrol tanks. 154 people perished in the disaster, with many others getting injured. Five houses, including the Goyal filling station, suffered various degrees of damage as a result of the fire valued at 1,658,847 cities. Motor vehicles, including a fuel tanker, were burnt beyond repairs. Never again became the mantra. While many would want to focus on the disaster as a mere outcome of natural happenings, let's remind ourselves that the flood did not just occur because it rained, but it happened because drains were choked by citizens' garbage and some gutters and even streams were also blocked because we have built in the waterways. Two years on, what has changed? The compound here I'm talking about, said there's some dirtiness around here. We're not supposed to be here. Those robbers, robbers. People will sit in a, in a box and come and throw it in the car here. They should be having people who secure the place very good way and stop people putting the rubbish here. The Kwame Nkrumah Circle is now Accra, Dubai, suggestive of better infrastructure to deal with flooding and traffic congestion. The traffic might have reduced, but the area still floods anytime it rains. Uh, most of the storm drains 
uh, that move into the main order goes into it in 90 degrees. So the engineers must come on board so that they will redirect the way the storm drain gets into the order. Dredging of the Odor drain seemed to be the only recommendation that has received attention. So what happened to other recommendations in the report, which includes the ban on the use of plastics as carrier bags, water dispensers and cooked food containers, certification and licensing of fuel station attendants, among others. A combination of policy failures and bad social habits led to the death of 154 Ghanaians. Yet we look on as the city decays. The capital is still associated with filth, congestion, poor planning and pollution. So do we really mean it when we say never again? Or it is a mere rhetoric. Catherine from Poma TV3 News, Accra. And still on the June 3 disaster, President Ikufuado has pledged to permanently resolve the perennial flooding in the capital in a speech read by the Minister for Works and Housing, Samuel Atachia, on his behalf. He noted government is considering the construction of an underground sewage system. The disaster saw the death of 150 persons and left many injured after an explosion at a well filling station at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. A solemn ceremony to mark the second anniversary of the event that shook the nation was held at the Calvary Baptist Church at Adabaka in Accra. The service was attended by families of those who lost their lives, survivors, members of the Adabaka Local Council of Churches and government functionaries. In a speech read by Works and Housing Minister Samuel Atachia for President Ikufado, touched on government plans to construct an underground sewage to resolve flooding in the area. I will be able to do it so that at the end of the day, people will not be worried when we have heavy downpours. Because the system will absorb the rains, all the sewage is underground, and it's at a proper destination, and everybody is safe. Unless there's a serious, serious, I mean, unprecedented rains. But let me tell you, it's very doable, and I'm telling you the president is going to do it. The Deputy Greater Accra Regional Minister Elizabeth Saki urged Ghanaians to eliminate indiscriminate dumping of refuse, which is a major cause of flooding. Cleanliness is next to godliness, and we ought to hold it as such. Let us prove to the world that we are children of God, and we need a cleaner and a cleanest city as the president did say. And I know you and I will hold on to those words. The chief executive of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Mohamed Ajeso, was said the AMA will begin the enforcement of the bylaws on National Sanitation Days. The quantum of work required to prosecute this job is uh, a lot. We don't have all the men. So we are adopting a snowball approach one community at a time. And once we come to a community and we do the job excellently, by the time we get to the third community, I'm sure the rest of our crowd people will know that uh, we are serious with that. There was also a wreath laying ceremony with five wreaths laid on behalf of the government of Ghana, Accra Metropolitan Assembly, victims of the June 3 disaster, as well as the Adabraka Local Council of Churches and the chiefs and people of Adabraka. Participants later visited the other drains where dredge masters were still at work to avert the recurrence of the disaster. A very narrow escape from death there. Meanwhile, President of the Ghana Burn Survival Foundation, Dennis Opoku Jemfi, says about 20 survivors, including a pregnant woman, had not received anything from the state. Speaking to TV3 on the sidelines of a memorial service at Adabraka, he disclosed they had earlier planned of hitting the streets to protest what he termed as discrimination against some of the survivors. And Isa, the question is, have we really learned the lesson? It's Two difficult to say if we have, because you drive around and you see much yeah. the same environmental situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it rains and water collects in small, small yes. uh, uh, packages Sheet. around the yeah. road. And you tend to think that what if the volume of water increases, then you, you're going to see a lot more, exactly. um, much the same situation. Mm -hmm. There'll be floods and uh, there'll be more. Now let's see the story that uh, my friend was just reading to you. 
Absolutely. So president of the Ghana Burn Survival Foundation, Dennis Opoku Jemfi, says about 20 survivors, including a pregnant woman, had not received anything from the state. Speaking to TV3 on the sidelines of memorial service at Adabraka, he disclosed that the earlier plans of hitting the streets to protest what he terms as discrimination against some of the survivors. President of the Ghana Burn Survival Foundation, Dennis Opoku Jemfi, Though acknowledged that the government at the time catered for their treatment, the compensation plan was not transparent. President of the foundation lamented that more survivors of the disaster were yet to be compensated by the state. He disclosed that for those who sustained bends alone, 25 of them joined the foundation and that out of the number, about 20 persons, including a pregnant woman, had not been given anything. It's rather unfortunate that up to date, still many are complaining about compensation. To be very sincere, we were about to, you know, walk the street of Accra to demonstrate and let people know that, we, I mean, the survivors are really in pain. Denis Oponji and wants government to help them by bringing on board a psychologist to help some of the survivors. Some of these things were to be factored at the hospital, get a coach, life coach or a peer support group sort of, you know, to support them, let them accept their new image. Bains is one of the most devastating forms of injury. It, it affects you both physically and, and psychologically. But Chief Executive Officer of the AMA, Mohamed Ajesua, says the government will ensure all survivors are duly compensated. Those who passed on, um, about 95% of them have received compensation. Largely, uh, what is remaining are the survivors of which the state uh, has pledged to support them. Together with Accra Metropolitan Assembly, we are working together to ensure that the survivors receive their compensation. Let's stay on the June 3 disaster a little longer. As Supreme Court Justice, Justice Jones Doche, says there is the need to strengthen the country's security agencies in order for them to deliver on their mandate to curtail lawlessness. He said most of the challenges facing the nation are as a result of the lack of enforcement of laws. Justice Jones Doche was speaking at the inauguration of the One Ghana Movement in Accra to advance citizen sensitization on national policies and accountability. The movement, as part of its missions, will also focus on the J4J3 campaign, which is intended to seek justice for victims of the 2015 June 3 flood and fire disaster through advocacy, legal aid, and financial interventions. Supreme Court Justice, Justice Jones Doche, who lauded the initiative, also intimated the June 3 disaster wouldn't have occurred if preventive measures and preparations were put in place. Public and civil servant technical views have become moderated by the political queens they serve in a given period other than objective policy analysis and actions. The pursuit of justice and enforcement of laws are more defined by the political coloration and wealth of the persons involved. Board member of the One Ghana Movement, Kofi Abuchi, expressed worry over what he said is the increasing exhibition of indiscipline in the country, which he said contributes to the woes of the country. The June 3rd disaster, as tragic and disastrous as that was, represents whatever is wrong with this country and therefore an opportunity for the One Ghana Movement, as it were, to be launched and, and to be put in a proper contextual frame. Victim of the disaster, Razak Blessing, said life has not been easy for him due to the stigma and financial difficulties he goes through daily. I was in SHS when it happened, and I have to go back to SHS to write to us. People staring at you, they say people who used to work with, they will not feel like working with you again, what you used to participate, especially in football, and you see that you go to training, but I will not be selected. So you see, this, it is a problem. Meanwhile, the family of late Captain Maxwell Adam Mahama is urging the general public to desist from politicizing the death of the late military officer. At a news conference in Accra, the family announced June 9 as the date proposed for the burial service at the military cemetery in Accra.
The spokesperson of the late Captain Mohammed's family, Zakari and Sakara Ahmed, said other funeral rites will be held in Bole in northern region and Tumu in the upper west region between June 13 and June 15. The family said they are waiting for approval from the military high command to enable them bury Captain Mahama. The family urged those politicizing the death of the late captain to stop. This is not politics. And any pastor who has been spoken to by God and think that it has anything to do with politics, we as a family say he should go and sleep again and ask God to give him clarification. The family of late Captain Maxwell Adam Hammer says only Fidelity Bank and Capital Bank had been cleared to receive donations from the public. According to the spokesperson of the family, Zakarian Sakara Ahmed, some individuals also approached the family to solicit funds to support the widow and children. He says some of these proposals have been accepted by the family to solicit funds for the family. Because we had earlier raised concerns about certain individuals who had created fraudulent accounts. She, unfortunately, was targeted as one of them. We would like to clarify it here. And her name, Modesta Adewuje Alubowuni. In fact, we know her. We would like to take this opportunity to apologize to her for whatever embarrassment this might have caused her and to make it clear to everyone that she's not a fraudster. The family of late Captain Maxwell Lada Mahama also announced that www.captainmaxwellmahama.com is the official website for the deceased family. Watching News 360, remember this bulletin is streaming live on News on TV 3 on Facebook as well as 3news.com. You can also watch us live on DSTV channel 279, still to come in the bulletin. We tell you how over 1,000 hectares of tomato farms in Tano north of the Bonua Hapo region have been destroyed. We'll bring the details of these stories and more news shortly. Stay with us. Farming season. Farmers in the northern half of the country are apprehensive of the fall army worm infestation fast engulfing the country. Some farmers say they may abandon their farms this year. Eva Tiboka has more. Three regions of the north are major cereal producers. Over the years, they have produced maize, sorghum, and many others to feed the nation. But the fall army worm is threatening their efforts this year. The fall army worms are said to have a great appetite for maize and sorghum and are already in all 10 regions. In a report commissioned by the DFID, the pest will affect an estimated 500,000 metric tons of maize and sorghum in Ghana with a projected value of some $163 million in 2017. It is early June and per the agriculture calendar, brisk farming activities would have started, but large tracts of farmland still lay fallow across the region. Although they are citing erratic rains for the delay, many say their fear is the fall army worm. You begin to come like this, when you plant in a month time or so, you see that it will just be growing nice. Before you get there, then there is some, that uh, ant or uh, that uh, worm will just chop under them and then it will die off. Other farmers are changing over to leguminous and tuber crops, but that is not helping either. Granites and yam, for instance, have for the past two years been susceptible to strange diseases and pests. We apply fertilizer. When you apply, that's the time that they will bring more this and you get more yield. But when they are coming, those worms will also come and they will be sucking their this. And, you know, when they are bringing fresh, it's soft, then they will be sucking them. After harvesting, you will see that it will just be this and, uh, chaff. The Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, in collaboration with other stakeholders, are first tackling the fall army worm problem to enable farmers catch up with the season. In whatever way, be it by way of information, be it by way of supporting to ensure that these worms are eradicated in any form. That is what SADA will do because that is what can ensure that uh, we have food sufficiency in the SADA zone. Regional agri directors and farmers are lauding government's quick response to the worm and entreating farmers to report any case for action. 
conditions in the Ashamine municipality is still a major concern as areas like Tulaku, Jericho and the Market Junction remain untidy. Poor roads also remain a concern for residents. Genic scenes are mainly due to the refuse containers left to overflow spilling over. These scenes are common in the municipality, particularly at the Presby School Junction, where the place has been used as a temporary refuse station. Sanitary conditions are deteriorating. At the Ashaiman Market, as business get better, sanitation obviously worsens. Poor sanitation in most parts of the market has become a blame game. Traders blame the authorities and authorities advocate attitudinal change. They are doing their possible best to, to bring up on board even private uh, waste managers and other people to, to increase the collection of the, the waste in the municipality or the evacuation of the waste in the municipality. Aside that, the Ashaiman Dual Carriage Road, which was commissioned last year, all link roads in the municipality are in a poor shape. Worsening by the day, residents say government must move in to handle the issue. But still in Ashaiman, the Member of Parliament for the area, Ernest Nogbe, has donated 10,000 exercise books and 3,400 mathematical sets to 50 private and public schools for the BEC candidates. The donations is expected to support them as they write this year's BEC exams. Let's turn our attention to other stories this evening as Member of Parliament for the K2 South constituency Fifi Kwete has vowed to support the Nana Ekufuado led at government to deliver on its mandate for economic transformation. Speaking at a book launch in Accra to mark his 50th anniversary, the Member of Parliament noted good governance and leadership is a collective effort in nation building. The event was graced by some members of parliament, stalwarts of the opposition National Democratic Congress and some veteran journalists. Some family members and friends also honored the Golden Jubilee celebration of the former Minister of Transport under the erstwhile John Mahama administration. According to Fifi Kwete, the celebration presents him the opportunity to reflect and ponder on his political verve and achievement as he journeys towards the second phase of his life. He also stressed good leadership is essential in the transformation of every nation and implored state officials to be responsible in the delivery of the duties. Together with my colleagues, we've contributed our quota. Of course, we could not turn this country into a paradise. And I'm actually wondering whether anybody is going to be able to achieve that. I genuinely, genuinely wish those who are in power today to give the best. And one of the quotes in the book again says, true leaders do not hope for the failure of their opponents. Fifi Kwete further explained that the idea to author the 99-page book which he christened the Golden Keys for Successful Living aims at awakening the spirit of godliness and instilling commitment and selflessness in people. Some guests shared their fond memories of him and wished him well. One of the things that I've come to appreciate of Fifi is that he applied the same seriousness to his work. My wish for Fifi is that he continues to flourish in all aspects of life. One of the strong assets and stalwarts of the minority caucus, my summary of the book is a perfect pitch of spirituality and reality. If Fifi was praying and the snake was coming, he would run away. The event was on the theme, celebrating a fulfilled life, still enjoying the journey. You're on News 360 and... Uh, we're taking a short break right now. A big European night is underway. Nana Fred will bring us the details when he joins us right after the break. Stay with us. Thanks, Afer, for that sports news. Let's now turn our attention to entertainment as a one-week celebration has been held for veteran actor Kofi Buckner, who passed on on May 23. A book of condolence was opened at his Nungwa residence on Saturday morning. Brenda Lutrit has more. Charles Kofi Babatunde Buckner, aged 64, was known in the entertainment industry for his wit and interesting characters in productions such as Heritage Africa, Double, Run Baby Run and Elmina. 
On May 23, the industry was hit with the shocking news of his demise. One week after his passing, his memory still lingers on. At his Noir residence, some industry players and well-wishers trooped in to offer their support and condolences. A book of condolence was opened in memory of him. Kojo Datsun, his colleague in the industry and an old mate from St. Augustine's College, recounted the time spent with him. 75, we formed Talent Incorporated. We were the first group in Ghana to put drama, music, dance, uh, theater, put it together. And uh, in 1978, we represented Ghana, the World Festival of Students in Cuba. Oscar Provinkal, popularly known for his role as Inspector Bidiakon, recounted fond memories of Kofi Bakna. He mentored quite a few of us, uh, so we looked up to him like a, like a father figure, a mentor. He inspired us, and watching him in um, Heritage Africa gave us more impetus, gave us more motivation. It was something that we wanted to do. Renowned actress Akofa Ejini couldn't hide her tears as she paid a glowing tribute to him. I worked with him on um, something, and we did uh, a film called Bose. And he was, he's, he's just sweet. I don't know what to say. And I don't know where all the good ones go so early, but it's happened. Vice President of the Actors Guild, Van Vicker, together with colleagues in the industry, presented an undisclosed amount to the family. He assured of the Guild's commitment to push for policies for veteran actors to revive the industry. There is a stage where actors are active and they, they get paid for the work they do. So I would say even before we get to that stage where we need to help contribute, there is an earlier stage which is help create the jobs so that they can make enough money to not necessarily want to have to ask for donations. Kofi Buckner will be remembered as one of Ghana's seasoned practitioners in the movie industry. Final burial rites is slated for June 30 at the Christ the Ken Parish and the 2nd of July at the St. Anthony's. Time will allow for this edition of News 360. Not only lies Christian Ronaldo. I, yes, she was smiling about him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, join us. Tomorrow night for another edition of News 360. I am Easter Morning. And I'm Natalie Ford. Thanks for your time this evening. Next is Music Music. Stay with TV3.